Hey, what's up guys? It's Foster from English Nui Kuru. So just really fast before we get started today, I have two things I want to tell you about. First, Alexia is coming to the United States this week. Technically next week. Obviously, I am super happy about this and you should be too. Because when Alexia and I are together physically, <laughs> that just means that we will have a lot more podcasts everything will have higher quality and just everything is better in general when Alexia is around. So while she is preparing for her trip, I decided to call one of my good friends to come on the show. Tony Marsh is the founder of langmatrix.com and he is really one of the most interesting voices in the field of linguistics and just the way he thinks about language is really really cool. So I decided to bring Tony on the show to help me with some of our Ask Me Anything questions from Sound School. So for those of you who don't know, Sound School is our pronunciation and conversation masterclass where Alexia and I work personally with all of our students. And it's really awesome. It's definitely the coolest thing we do. But anyway, we have a section in Sound School called Ask Me Anything where our students can literally ask us any questions they have about English, pronunciation, travel, whatever. So if you want to participate in sound school, if you're really serious about improving your English, you can start working personally with me and Alexia starting for just 39 reais per month. That's like the cost of dinner at a restaurant, at least in Rio de Janeiro or Sao Paulo. Okay, so anyway, um, after a quick word from our sponsors, we'll get started with the show. Thanks, guys. This episode of English no Kruhaju is brought to you by our friends at Cambly. Cambly is one of the coolest, if not the coolest online platform to have real conversations with real professional native teachers whenever, wherever you want. Seriously, Cambly is an incredible service, and on top of that, they are just really, really great people, and our students are having a lot of fun and success with Cambly. And the best thing is, you can try Cambly today for free. Yes, 100% for free. No credit card information or anything like that. Simply go to Cambly.com or download the Cambly app on your phone. And use the promotional code Inglés Nui Cru Podcast to get your first class for free. Again, go to Cambly.com or download the app and use the promo code Inglés Nui Cru Podcast to get your first class with a professional native speaker today. Okay, let's get on with the show. Cool. So, Tony, another question that we receive all the time, some version of this question. And honestly, it's a question I kind of get annoyed by because I receive right. it so much. Right. How long does it take to be fluent yeah. in English? <clears throat> yeah, man. Indeed. We both have to take a sip of our beverage before we <laughs> tackle that one. Yeah. So, I think an easy way to start here is... Obviously, a lot of people have different interpretations of what is fluency. Yeah. So do you just want to kind of give your take on how you view fluency, if you even think that's a valid concept to begin with? Yeah, yeah. Totally legit question for sure. And there's a lot of good stuff to talk about it. When it when first, first thing preface that comes to mind, I do feel a bit that the word fluency is a to is a cliche. For sure. Like I'm speaking English right now, and I know what I'm saying. At least for the next few seconds, I kind of know where I'm going. So I'm speaking fluently. But even in my own native language, you might catch me going, you know, like there's, uh, there's, and am I no longer fluent? I mean, it's a moment. It's moment by moment. For one thing. Yeah. Are we talking how fluid it comes out? I mean, that's a that's okay. I, I that, if that's the if that's the tool of measuring how fluent you are, 
then it's like a meter that bounces up and down as much as a sound uh, volume level thing pops up and down as you. I mean, it's I'm fluent right now, and you know, sometimes I'm not as fluent. Uh, some days I feel like I can speak uh, foreign languages, like like a like a beast and then other days I, <laughs> and other days i'm like dude what's kind of going on and that's the same with your native language so it's so it Absolutely. can be a bit of a cliche i feel like the word fluency is to language as the word authentic is to mexican restaurants <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's every that's awesome. every restaurant is authentic even if it's like craft cheese like on a bagel yeah <laughs> it's uh it's like uh obligatory like you it must be so everyone's talking about fluency anyways just want to get that off my chest yeah no i think that's those are very valid points and i think where this question really comes from a lot of times um two things i think the idea of fluency is just the stereotype like you study in the united states or you study somewhere to learn a foreign language and then you come back and everyone's like hey are you fluent do you speak right. spanish fluently and people Did you get like, your mm -hmm. fluency license yeah. Can you drive the fluency car? Correct. And then I think a more practical way that people are actually trying to express this in this question is how much work am I going to have to put into this endeavor yeah. of learning a new language? Yeah. Yeah, man. So um, um, yeah. feel free to take those as you, <laughs> as you wish. I personally, I personally have... So I see a spectrum as, as I often, I mean, you, there's spectrums everywhere. I see, I see this spectrum in terms of defining fluency, one end of the spectrum being, well, this person can talk about everything there is to talk about. He's for sure fluent. I mean, Foster's for sure fluent in English. There's that one standard. <clears throat> now it's easy to, it's easy for people to imagine that standard. Like any, anyone can think of their most beautiful idealized idea of what fluency means that's not hard to visualize what can be hard to visualize is the other end of the spectrum and how could you still be fluent or even just at your best like in at your personal best in this moment even if you're not that wonderful vision of what i think fluency must mean everyone else is fluent except for me i i don't you know what i mean that that right. feeling where you're you're never you're never quite there so what i like to do is i like to visualize and and articulate the other end of the spectrum the side of the spectrum that's not so easy to visualize sometimes right and so just pushing things to the ultimate extreme to to illustrate that here's my feeling on what fluency can be let's pretend that all I ever need to say in English, let, I live in, a, I don't know how this would happen, but pretend all I ever need to say, I pick up the phone or, or, I, or I say, I say, ticket, please. Thank you. Ticket, please. Thank you. Ticket, please. Thank you. And then I go home and continue speaking my normal language. All I know how to say in English or, or, or the foreign language you know, is ticket, please. Thank you. Ticket, please. Thank you. Here's the thing. If that's all I need to say, then if I can say that, I'm 100% fluent. Yeah, functional fluency. For sure. And, yeah. and I'll take that extreme view, at least just to illustrate the point. If your feeling is that in order to be fluent, you need to be able to speak on one million things, then you will need to be able to speak on one million things to be fluent. If, unfortunately, your vision of fluency is that you must need to be able to speak on infinite amount of things, then you will always be infinitely far away because no matter how fast you fly toward infinity, you're never at infinity. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. So instead of that, I'm just going to think about this. What's that one thing that I want to talk about? Maybe just hello to start with. All right. That's fine. That's all. That's my expectation. It's like the, almost a Zen thing. It's like, if you're never, you never expect anything, you're never disappointed. So all I'm going to, all I'm going to expect is just one or two things and once i can say those then i'm up and running right and i'll build so i'll let the need uh it, it's a it's a numerator denominator a denominator thing it's like okay i got 10 things i want to talk about i can speak on nine of them i'm nine percent uh you know uh, nine out of not 90 percent fluent you see what i'm saying so I'm, I'm letting the i'm keeping the expectation low absolutely yeah i mean and building, building upon with uh, you know what i need yeah the key to happiness is low expectations there you go yeah. So the way I kind of see this is I like to view fluency kind of in stages that are, they can be disparate or somewhat yep. linear. So for example, when I was starting out in Portuguese, 
everyone was asking me the same questions like what are you doing here right. like isn't it cooler in the u.s what do you think about rio mm -hmm. soccer team you know those things i got very fluent in that very basic level of conversation right. pretty quickly right and then after you do that it's like okay where do i go from here and then you kind of tackle your next level and it can be moving off to the left and you're talking about sports or something or you're talking right. about sports. right yeah I call that my my routine, and I think of it. Speaking of comedians, I think of that as a, a, a comedian's routine, which is made up of bits, you know. Uh, and 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 when a comedian writes a new bit, they have to try the bit out like a bunch of times on the local circuit before they put it in the Netflix special. And then by the time they're they're ready, they have this collection of bits, and that's definitely their routine. Now they can change the order; they can go here, they can go there in the routine. They can tie it together differently, but generally, they, they have that routine. And I think that's a major strategy point. I don't think that's some sort of weird, you know, cheat or oh, that's not sustainable. That's not really what you should do. No, that's exactly what you do. You should do. I think uh, children learning their first language, native speakers, I think, build one routine at a time. I mean, children are fluent at talking about when they're hungry and thirsty, for example, not necessarily talking about quantum physics, that's fine. You get cross that bridge when you come to it. So yeah, I, I, I'm into just building the routine, drawing from the routine. Yeah, absolutely. No, no. Crazy dog. Um, I think the stand-up comic analogy is I really see no holes in that analogy at all. Because if you think about a stand-up comic, first of all, they're just you know, they're thinking of something funny. It's like a very basic idea. And then they start saying it to people, maybe their friends, and then they start using it on stage. Right. And then eventually they have the, these collections of like micro routines that they've memorized. They fit them into an entire hour, which right. they have some level of improvisation. They can move back and forth, bounce it off the audience. And then after they finish that perfect hour and it's on Netflix or HBO or whatever, yeah. the next year, they have to start all over again and make right. new jokes and shit, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. I see. Yeah, exactly. See, I find that paradoxically, the more you invest in a routine, the quicker you actually become improvisational. Exactly. Right. Yeah. You, you think that's, well, I can't just memorize everything. Well, just memorize now until you get to the point where you break free. And the quicker you get your routine squared away and building and growing, the faster you become improvisational, where you know, where you no longer have to rely on the routine. Exactly. Yeah, I don't even think it should be. I do think it is somewhat paradoxical, but it's so common in everything we do. If we acquire yeah. any new skill, if you're learning to play basketball or something, you can't like drive to the hoop with your left hand before knowing how to like dribble. Just, exactly. Yeah, you got You got to fake it until you make it. Exactly. Cool. So. I think we didn't even touch on the question of how long does it take to become fluent? And I think that's a good thing because I think that is at least the wrong way to frame the question. I, I think so. I think so. I can say this. If you're taking years to feel good, then your <laughs> method might be off. Yeah. And I'm not blaming anyone. I'm just saying that you often find approaches that have people going I studied Spanish all four years in high school, but now I don't know anything at all. And it's like, it's not, I'm not saying it's their fault. I'm just saying it's, 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 it's the approach, but, but nevertheless, if it's taken years, I'd say there's a problem in my own personal expectations for my students. I want us going back and forth with some conversation pretty, pretty soon. It might be very simple conversation, but I want to get the ball rolling soon. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. I think if you apply that logic to any other part of your life, like I'm going to work on, I'm going to work in this company for four years and if it's terrible and I'm not learning anything and I'm not like getting a raise yeah for four years I'm just going to say well that didn't work you know that's just a weird way to approach it yeah well I, I mean it's never too late to switch up the methodology but uh, if I don't know if 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 pressed to put a timeline on something I'd say within a few months you want to be feeling good if, you, if you're not conversing at least a bit in a few months, then you're probably not conversing enough. Yeah, precisely. Hey guys, thanks so much for listening to another episode of English no Kuruhaju. If you like what we do, if you want to support the show, here's what you can do. 
leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts or Android, wherever you listen to the podcast, it really helps other people discover the show. And you can sign up for our VIP newsletter. So each time we release new courses, early discounts for sound school, new worksheets, special discounts, the people on our newsletter are the first to know. So if you are interested in the things we are doing, go to EnglishNewCrew.com and sign up. And as always, keep up the good fight and lose well. Até já.